<laughs> Still sick. Oh my gosh. So having worked in a commercial recording studio now for about 10 years, one that I own, what are 10 things that you need to be a successful recording engineer and to run a successful business? Spoiler alert, none of them are gear. To be clear, it's kind of understood that you need gear. I don't think that the choices you make in gear are, are what's going to be the hinge point on if you have a successful business or not. However, these things, if you lack them, there's a good chance you won't last very long. So the first one being technical expertise. Although it's not gear, it is definitely gear related. It's understood that as a recording engineer or producer, someone providing a space in which creative stuff happens, you should be able to know how to run that gear. And not just that, if you were picked up and put into another room, could you quickly understand that room? Things like understanding signal flow, uh, how to fix a problem with a signal. Is it, is it the mic? Is it the cable? How to quickly diagnose and go through that? You definitely need to have a good working knowledge of the equipment that you're using and the software that you have in your studio because time is money. And if you plan on making any money, you have to be as efficient as possible. Because when the client sees that their time is respected and protected, they're willing to spend more of it with you. Number two, you need excellent communication communication skills. This is massive. Everything that we do is surrounded by someone else's vision. Obviously, they're coming to you, they appreciate your creative input. They can recognize your background in any given area. However, we're ultimately hired to help someone else realize their creative vision. And oftentimes, if, if a project is just completely falling apart, it's because of communication or lack thereof. Being able to communicate with clients, with musicians, with other industry professionals, these are huge in the success of your business. Number three, really strong problem solving skills. And not just that, but being able to keep like a really, really cool head when something goes wrong. I can't tell you the amount of times that I have been absolutely horrified during a session, but I had a poker face. If I knew how to play poker, I'd probably be pretty good at it. That's not true at all. That's not true. I have had somebody explain it to me as if I were scrappy. Even when things are going horribly wrong, you can somehow make this work. This particular example goes back to having technical knowledge of what you're working with. I was running broadcasts in the middle of it as the head engineer there, and we were in a room full of engineers. I just happened to be running it that week. Pro Tools started to crash. Something happened to the system. I was just brought on, so maybe the template wasn't developed in the most efficient way that it could have been, but Pro Tools was starting to crash. Uh, since then, it hasn't happened. It wasn't Pro Tools' fault. It was probably my fault, putting a plug in that shouldn't be used in a live situation like that, not having tested it nearly enough. That said, I could keep the broadcast going because I knew how to operate it without it fully shutting down. The benefit of running an HDX system is those audio engines will continue to work until the application is completely closed. And knowing how to ride that really, really fine line <laughs> really saved that particular broadcast. So knowing how to solve that particular problem was the ultimate test in keeping a cool head. Number four, you have to have an attention to detail. You have to be able to make quick decisions. And this goes back to communication. Because we're working towards someone else's vision, there's an aspect of this that you have to be able to quickly make decisions in someone else's shoes, if that makes sense. One quick example here is in a recording situation, if you have a whole lot of options as far as miking any given instrument, you have to decide really, really quick if it's gonna one, work for the session, or two, if you like it. And paying attention to those details of what's happening, not just with that per instrument in particular, but what's happening around it. What is your sonic playing field look like here? What space are you trying to fill with any one particular instrument? There was one session I had not too long ago where the artist commented because I had sent them to a room with one particular mic set up to record, I think it was a mandolin. And within the first 10 seconds of hearing that thing on the mic, I said I hated it. And we changed out the mic and we got to something that we really, really liked. So in some instances, you have to be willing to say that's not working and decide really, really fast. So it's definitely an attention to detail as far as sonically what's happening and an attention to knowing what your gear will do in certain situations and paying attention to that whole big picture. Number five, business acumen. As much as we don't like it, you have to be able to be an effective business person because what we're doing here 
besides being really, really creative and in the moment, fleshing out what other people want and being really tapped into like the emotional side of music creation, we also have to be focused on the business itself. So having a general understanding of like financial management, marketing, how to set your rates competitively and appropriately, managing clients' budgets, all while finding new clients. Being able to act as an effective business person doesn't have to mean a negative connotation of being a businessman or a businesswoman. It's not necessarily a bad thing. If you are creating a business, regardless of the market that you're in, it has to be financially viable for not only you, but for those around you. And that's how you create like a healthy little industry market. <laughs> the product that you make has to be accessible, the way you make it has to be efficient, and then it has to make sense for you from a financial perspective. Number six, time management skills. Time management is the hardest thing to learn. It was for me. In the beginning, I could not effectively run my own schedule. I believe it's Parkinson's law that says like any given project will expand or contract to fit the time that you give it. <laughs> and I think as a lot of us starting out, we give ourselves way too much time to do something. I, I do mix consults with some of you guys watching these videos. And sometimes you say you've been mixing songs for weeks or even worse, months. That, not only is it really, really difficult to charge appropriately if that's the amount of time that you put into a project, but I would have to start asking if it's taking you that long to mix something, would your time not be better used going back and fixing the problems? If you're struggling to get the snare tone that you hear in your head, why not go back and get a different snare. So sometimes time management, yeah, is just that. Making sure you get yourself to work and making sure if you have a family that you're also spending time with your family because a work-life balance is, is this portion too. But no one else is gonna force you to punch a time card when you work for yourself. So being able to effectively manage your time not just for making sure you get projects done but also making sure you get them done efficiently. What part of the day do you work better? When are you the most creative? When do you get the most done? Number seven is a collaborative attitude. The joke with recording engineers is that we are kind of by ourselves all the time. We work in a dark room. You need to be able to work with a team and direct them effectively and not be a total douche about it. As weird as it sounds, like you have to be able to work well with a team and be a team player. But there's definitely truth to that. I mean, think about what we're doing for eight to 10 hours in a day. We're creating music, probably one of the most subjective things you could possibly do with your time. And you have to keep one to six, seven, 10 people on board with one particular vision. And these are creative individuals. You're gonna butt heads at some point. So yeah, you have to know how to drive the ship and maintain control of a session and make sure it goes as smoothly as it can possibly go. But on the flip side of this, you have to know how to keep those people engaged in the process. Whether it's a band who's there recording with you or session players who were hired to be there, those people have to be creatively bought into the process at all times. And everything that you do contributes to whether they can stay in that flow state or not. Being able to be collaborative is enormous. Number eight would be adaptability. And I think this is the technical aspect as much as it is in the creative aspect. On the session I just had, you can plan as much as you can plan and you can do all the pre-production so you're blue in the face. And you can think you are so prepared for something until the day gets there and then the artist just doesn't like it. Or better yet, a better, better one for you. You are two or three takes into a song and the artist wants to call an audible. There's six people in the room besides you and the artist who are being paid to be there. And you have to figure out really, really fast what the artist wants and how to get it to him quick. Being able to make a complete left turn is huge. And there's also that with the software side of it. How much do things change for us? New software comes out. You have to stay on top of your game. New methods of distribution pop up. You have to be able to learn it. The music industry is constantly changing and we have to be able to adapt to it. And I don't think it's a bad thing. It's part of the appeal in working in this industry. You're constantly trying to figure it out. Number nine, you have to be 
creative. If you're anything like me, you kind of came at this job from being a musician in the first place. So we kind of have like a creative background instilled in us from the very beginning. That said, keeping yourself tapped into that creativity can definitely be a challenge. The more you're in this job as a recording engineer, studio owner, whatever that is, the more you can definitely get pulled to the technical side. And, and that's important, that's hugely important to know the technical aspects of what we're doing. But that creative side of you has to take those rules and take those things that we're supposed to do and know when to bend them to make something different or to tell a story better, to, to tap into an emotion in a different way. So it seems like two opposing sides to the same coin, and it pretty much is. I don't have a better answer for it, but you have to know the rules, know when to break them. It's a lot like the pushback with music theory. Some people don't wanna learn music theory because they're afraid it'll make them some sort of music machine who has no emotion or feeling. On the contrary, it's a tool to help you tap into your intentions way faster. The last one is marketing and networking skills. This goes without saying. One of the most important things that I've found as a studio owner is keeping people as repeat clients. That is the lifeblood of keeping your doors open, making sure your clients are happy at every single stage you're working with them at, and being able to genuinely treat them as the most important person in the room at all times. Taking a genuine interest in what they're trying to do and being part of their team. People know when they're being patronized and they know when you're just trying to do it for a buck. And marketing doesn't have to be kind of this sleazy backdoor thing that we're trying to get our name out there all the time. It can be taking a genuine interest in your client and genuinely treating them as you would like to be treated. Word of mouth is the most effective marketing tool you can get, and I think it starts there with treating your clients really, really well. Past that, being able to network and hook people up. Sometimes just getting somebody attached to somebody else and now you are the connective tissue between those two people, that helps you be top of mind with them. And next time they need something, who are they gonna call? Running a business can definitely be scary, but it's also one of the most fun things that I've ever done with my life. It's been one of the most trying things I've ever done. And there's definitely a fair bit of gear that you need to do this, and that'll be in the next video. But these are the things that will help you sustain a business. If you guys like this style of video, please let me know. Hit the like button, hit that subscribe button for more stuff. Check out the Patreon if you want behind the scenes material. I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. I'll see you in the next one.